42 and a half million pounds spent nine first team players signed 10.75 million pounds brought in in transfer fees let's go see how the summer transfer window went down so we're going to absolutely blitz through the outs before we get on to the ins this is my favorite part of any save completely transforming a squad lucas larega went and joined lens for 5.5 million pounds it's five pound uh, five million initial and then could rise to five and a half which I'm not even bothered if he doesn't. He was a decent central midfielder. Wasn't one of our starting 11. So to get that sort of fee from him was excellent. Especially when you consider some of the players we've signed. Next to leave was Andrea Favilli. You'll never have seen this boy. He get a fee could rise to 5.25. But at least 4.3 of that is guaranteed. He was on loan at... Uh, I can't remember who he was on, on loan at. It doesn't really matter. We did recall him in the January transfer window last season. To be our fourth choice striker. He never quite made the grade. And we saw him. We had Brescia come in with an offer. He was going to continue being our fourth choice strikeout until Brescia did come in and uh, get that sort of fee from was especially when we can't set any of our other players, was fantastic. A couple of other fee players uh, gone out. Vittorio Paragini went to join St. Etienne for 550k. Pet Arbrelek went to join Entella for 425. Powell Jarosinski went to join Pescara for 400k. And a couple of other really low offers and a lot of frees. One loan, Niccolo Armini, our January transfer signing, has went and joined FC Nantes in League 1 for the season. It'll be a first choice centre-half, so hopefully he comes back to us. Absolutely fantastic. He's already started two games in League 1, so we're hoping, I'm hoping beyond hope that he becomes back, uh, maybe even a first choice centre-half. And let's go to the ins. We'll start with the loan signing of Moise Keane. Now, I wanted to sign him permanently. I didn't have 88 million quid. So we decided to loan him instead. He's going to be our, one of our first choice strikers. He's going to be starting pretty much every single game. And I'm hoping we're going to get the best out of Moyes. He hasn't had the best time at Everton. I don't believe he played too much at uh, PSG. A lot of uh, games coming off the bench. So I think his attributes are actually a little bit lower than they could be. And I think he might rock it up whilst getting regular first team football here. Next to join us, of course, we all know, was Marco Sportiello. A free signing from Atlanta. He's going to come in, do a job for us at goalkeeper. It will be an area I will look to improve further in the save when we're looking for youngsters to come in, be first choice and grow with the club. But at least for now, Sport Yellow is going to be fantastic. Alberto Palieri was a signing I had nothing to do with. It was already pre-agreed, so don't get at me about it. Next up was Anel Ahmedzovic. We're going to call him Anel for the rest of the season. Amar from Malmo, 3 million quid. Centre half, ball playing defender, 22 years old, three and a half star current, four and a half star potential, super well rounded stats, and first choice centre back, absolutely no doubt about it. He's only on £10,000 per week, an absolute deal like robbery from him. He could have demanded a lot more, and I probably would have paid a but superb signing in my eyes. Again, similar to Alberto Paleri, Mattia Barney was already a, a deal already agreed, £3.2 million. He's not a bad centre half. He won't be first choice for us, though. Next to join us was Ehen Munoz from Real San Sebastian or Real Sociedad for 3.4 million quid. He's our Luca Pellegrini replacement. Now, this area was an area where I did actually have a couple of options in mind, but they cost far too much money. So uh, this was the cheaper option. And at 24 years old, we've still got a bit of potential to grow. Well-rounded stats. He's going to be first choice. And again, it's an area where he maybe plays for a season. We get 10 million quid from him and then we upgrade with a young 19-year-old with five-star potential. Next up was Killian Sardella. We signed from Anderlecht for four and a half million pound. He will be our first choice right back. Media description as a centre back. I do not see him that way whatsoever. I see him as a wing back. And that's where we're going to be playing him. He's got three-star current, four and a half-star potential, 19 years old, 12 grip, 12 k per week. What could possibly go wrong? Next up, probably one of my favourite signings. Not in terms of what they could become, just because of what he offers right now. Thomas Belmont. We signed from Lanos for four and a half million pounds. Now we had a couple of the big boys sniffing after him. I believe Chelsea were interested along with a couple of other Premier League clubs. Um, but he's going to be our rock in the centre of midfield. He's going to be a box-to-box -box midfielder. And hopefully just with the well-rounded attributes that he's got and the physicals that he's got, he's going to provide the defensive cover that we're probably lacking compared to some other positions and player roles that we've got, whilst also being able to support in the attack. Next up is our second centre-back signing, David Carmo from Braga for six and a half million pounds now. I'm hoping this guy is going to get double figures for the season in terms of goals. He's three-star current, four-star potential, which isn't the best. 
he was, I think, a five-star player when my scout report came in in terms of potential. So uh, I was a little bit deceived by our scout. But even so, even if he doesn't improve massively, he's still a big improvement of what we had before. And he offers that aerial threat from corners, which is what I was really after from a second centre-half. So him and Anel will be our two centre-halves. And I think we've massively improved the defence. Seven and a half million pounds. Carlos Alcaraz from Racing Club. He will be our starting central midfielder. 18 years old. Three and a half star current. Five star potential. He will be playing in an attack and Metzola role in the centre of midfield alongside Tem uh, Thomas Belmont. His technicals are absolutely dreamy for a Metzola. I'm fully expecting him to look like an absolute beast within a couple of years. He's got some work to do on his mentals. He's got some work to do on his physicals, but not a lot. He's pretty well-rounded in that category as well. And I'm absolutely delighted to bring him in. Seven and a half million quid. We're going to be able to sell this boy for 40 million plus. I have no doubt about it. And I think the same can be said for all of our players. We're going to make massive profits on any of them when we do eventually come to sell. And finally, one of the major problem positions I was having in the summer transfer window was striker. So we ended up settling for Adam Hlozek from Sparta Prague. Eight million quid. He's classed as a wonder kid by the media already, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, 19 years old. He's valued at 10.5 already. Four-star current, five-star potential. Some uh, definite weaknesses in his technical category, as you can see. As an advanced forward, his passing is pretty poor. His work rate's pretty poor as well in his mentals, but physically, he's absolutely to die for. And you've probably noticed a theme throughout the squad. Physicals was a big area where we needed to improve. We had one of the slowest squads in the league. And now we've definitely remedied that with some of our signings. So yeah, forty-two and a half million pounds spent. We brought in ten, and we've absolutely massively reduced the wage bill. We're currently spending uh, six hundred and seventy-four thousand pounds on wages. We, that was eight hundred and sixty at the end of last season. The board gave me ten million pound transfer budget to start with, and then a million pound per week in wage budget. So of course, so a lot of the wage budget ended up going into the transfer budget. And we've deferred a lot of the fees for three uh, three years. So I've robbed from future Sam, but I know he won't mind because we've got some absolute gems in this squad now. In terms of a first 11 for this season, and this is how I anticipate our best first 11 playing out. Marco Sportiello in goal. Uh, Killian Sardella, Anel, David Carmo and Ehen Munoz in the defence. Filippo Melagioni, the only surviving player from when we joined Atlanta, starting in defensive midfield. He is still on loan at us until the end of next season when he joins permanently, because Italy's weird. They agree two-year loan deals and then permanent transfers after that straight away. Thomas Belmont and Carlos Alcaraz in the centre of midfield. Thiago Almada, of course, our January signing. In attack of midfield with Adam Hlozek and Moyes Keane leading the line. We have already played one game. It wasn't a particularly great one. It was a 1-0 home win against Cremonese in the Italian Cup. Moyes Keane getting the only goal of the game. The two centre-halves and the two strikers performing quite well in this one. In terms of today's episode, though, we have Sampdoria at home in the first game of our Serie A uh, run this season. Of course, Sampdoria are our local rivals and we will have to be at our best if we are to get a result today. I'm not expecting miracles from this squad straight away. Uh, we've made too many changes for that to happen. The first five or ten games will be pretty dodgy, I would imagine. But here, if we can sneak a good few wins in there, that will absolutely be fine by me. We've selected our squad. Our best first 11 is fit and ready. Uh, Almada and Alcaraz were actually at the Olympic Games with Argentina. And Almada came out injured for three weeks and I was absolutely raging. But uh, they're all fit now, so we can't complain. Let's G the boys up, get to the game and see how we get on with our squad now. I've got no more excuses. This is my team. Well, this has been great. 35 minutes in, no highlights, and Munoz has got himself injured. We'll bring on Lennart Sisbora at left-back. First highlight of the game, 45 minutes in. Oh, <laughs> I thought it was going to go all the way. Mela Joni picks up the ball on the edge of the area. He clears it to Sardella on this right-hand side. A bit of a jump there. Goes back post. Algaraz is there. He hits the bar. The ball is bobbling about, and we can't get there first. And that's the first half. Fantastic. Love it. Let's get the second half. First highlight of the second half comes two minutes into it. That is a lot better. Moyes Keane drives into the box and goes for goal. Emil Ordero with the easiest save of his career. Melagioni with a free kick plays a back post. David Carmo is brought down brutally by Jacob Jankdor and we are surely going to get a penalty. It is going to go to VAR. Give us 10 minutes.
check in penalty review. Oh, come on, man. Penalty has been awarded. we seen that during the highlight. We knew David Cormo was brought down. And now we'll watch the referee run back to the box because, of course, who is the man stepping up to take it is Thiago Almada, our attacking midfielder. Can he beat Ordero? He certainly can. Genoa won. Sampdoria nil. A much better second half so far. 20 minutes to go. Not a lot happening after the goal. Uh, Thomas Belmont has picked up a knock. Uh, Stefano Sturaro is our natural replacement. I'm more than happy to make that change. We've got some real strength and depth this season. Carlos Alcaraz as well. He's not uh, too fit, so we'll bring on Francesco Casata for him in the centre of midfield. Got three more subs. I always forget about the five subs. Um, so we can make plenty of changes later on if we need to. Melagioni goes for goal. Oh, what a goal that would have been. Odero with a, a good save. Oh, my God. Sampdoria breaking after the resultant corner. Sardella does well. And that's surely highlight over. Ten minutes to go. Sampdoria are on the attack now. But we do get a clear. And Casata can bring a forward down this left-hand side. He fires Moise Keane in a pot of space. We haven't really seen too much of the strikers this game. Uh, Casata back out to Sturaro. We do. We'll rework it. That is fine. Keep possession. Turn it over. Look for some space as Sardella finds a little pocket on that right hand side. We go back to Alm. That's fine. That's fine. I'm not. I'm not angry about it. As long as we keep possession and don't give it away, which is always the worry. Sardella whips it in. It's cleared again by Sampdoria. Got plenty of space on the wings if we want to use it. Moise Keane feeds it back to Sardella. Can we get a better end product? Adam Hlozek is there. His debut goal in the league. Adam Hlozek's first goal of the season. Genoa 2, Sampdoria 0, Sardella getting the assist. You'll love to see the new boys come good. With only a few minutes to go, we will look to get some tired legs off the pitch. Killian Sardella can come off for... Uh, where is my substitute right back? He mustn't be on the bench. Andrea can be... I cannot make any more substitutes. Has it went back to three? It's went back to three subs, boys. I thought it stayed at five. Uh, never mind. Um, is this a highlight? Why is the match stats still there? It wasn't. We get away... With a 2-0 win. A very, very good first game. Of course, we need to give these boys time to bet in. But an average expected goals of 2.58 in any game is very, very good. The two midfielders were newly subbed. Everyone performed well in that game. And we can be absolutely delighted with our first three points of this season. So the January transfer... Uh, the January tra The summer transfer window is still open. So we'll probably still be making sales. We still have 9.78 million and 96k per week available in the wage budget for the right player. I was trying to sign Amin Guri um, instead of loaning Moise Keane. I, I do prefer a permanent signing than a loan signing, obviously. But he ended up signing a new contract with Nice. So it's not going to end up coming through. Maybe next season if he's still at the sort of level of player that we're looking at. But um, not this season. And I'll probably save this money for January, I think. But of course, we'll have to wait and see what happens. There might be someone who pops up during this transfer window that I just have to sign. But anyway, lads, I'm not sure when we're going to come back. I'm going to play through the save, get a feel for exactly what sort of club we are. Are we challenging at the top? Are we mid-table? Are we still in the bottom half? We'll have to wait and see. I'm not expecting us to be in the bottom half. I'm expecting us to be in the top half. It just depends on, are we fighting the likes of Na Napoli and Lazio or should I come back for Verona Udinese for a little bit of an easier game? One signing. I'm, I've got to tell you about this one sign and Sandro Tonali he returned to Brescia from AC Milan without AC Milan actually activating his clause or whatever they had in Volgerum so I bid and worked out a deal at £25 million which we could easily have easily afforded we hadn't signed Thomas Belmont at the time and the board pulled the plug and they also pulled the plug on Esposito I had a fee agreed for him as well but they said it was too much so uh, our board they're not going to let me make speculative bids like that even though we all know Sandro Tonali, I could sell for 60, 70 million in a few seasons' time. The board are a little bit tight. But anyway, lads, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.